And what about Monsieur? Sorry, please, sorry. Hello. Я занят. What about Monesi? You know, I couldn't get simple, but I got Monesi, and I'm so glad I did because Monesi is better. More than one thousand dollars. More than one thousand dollars. Yeah, this face kind of. They're a bunch of clowns, bro. I joke. These people are insane. Really. Это видео полностью переведено на русский язык в субтитрах, но также присутствует вторая звуковая дорожка с русским дубляжом. Воспользуйтесь этой магической кнопкой, если вам так удобнее. Карлс Ацелот Родригес, основатель организации G2. Родился в Испании и уже в 17 лет выиграл 2000 евро на чемпионате по Warcraft. Позже Ацелот ушел в LoL, где стал очень популярным игроком. У него был огромный онлайн на Твиче, личные спонсорские контракты и зарплата от СК Гейминг. Он зарабатывал до миллиона евро в год, но будни про игрока стали слишком скучными, и Карлс ушел, чтобы основать свою организацию Gamers2. За прошедшие 10 лет G2 стали большим мультигеймингом, но в 2022 году Ацелоту пришлось покинуть пост гендиректора из-за медийного скандала. Если материал тебе понравится, то не забудь поставить лайк. А на экране последние 50 подписчиков этого канала. Подпишись, чтобы попасть в следующий ролик. Карлс, спасибо за интервью. Я очень рад. Моя честь, мой брат. Моя честь. Спасибо большое. Давайте вернемся к тому, когда вы решили создать свою собственную организацию. Первый вопрос. Почему? Почему? Какая была ваша мотивация? People say you had a good contract with SK Gaming as a player. Yeah, yeah I, had a, I had good terms as a player. Being a player treated me very well, but I am a very ambitious person. You know, I'm the kind of person that if I'm playing poker, if every hand I'm playing with a two and a seven, <laughs> I can win some hands, but I feel like shit because I cannot win most hands, you know, because I have a two and a seven. So I have to play with the best cards. And that's the way I think about everything. I think about where I live, the businesses I do, how I deploy my time, what do I learn when I have free time, even how do I have fun. I try to be, I try to squeeze as much value as possible from every moment. So when I saw the opportunity of creating the most ambitious company I can think of in the world of esports, then a team just came to mind. A team will always be bigger than a league. A team will always be a better business in the future than games. A team will always be bigger than a headset company for video games only. Why is that? Because every day that passes, there's one more fan, and then one more fan, one more fan. Eventually, you become so big that every single publisher, brand, product that comes new wants to work with who? The biggest teams. So eventually, I become so big that every, every, everybody will want to pay me money to promote them. That was my theory back then. And now it's proven to be true. Back then, did you have any education in this field, or at least some experience in managing people? <clears throat> education in any field is worth almost nothing. I don't believe you can read a book about a specific field and then become expert. I don't believe that you can even speak to me and become expert. You can only become expert by doing. That's the only way, you know? So no, I, I had no idea how to manage people. I had no idea how to create a business. I had no idea how to make money in the world of esports. But I learned to do everything. And I learned by failing. I learned by understanding what works, what doesn't. And I learned by pattern recognition, you know? <clears throat> if you have a good attitude, if you are ambitious and you are humble enough, you will learn, always. You will always learn. So yeah, no, when I, when I started G2, My only experience in life was traveling the world, competing in video games. <clears throat> and yeah, I was the captain of my team, of my teams, which gives you a lot of skills, yeah. you know. You have to know how to speak to this guy. You have to know how to speak to this other guy. Some people are more sensitive than others. Some people, you can tell them straight. For example, Russians, you can tell them straight. You, you, you can say, you're shit. And the Russian will be like, okay, I understand. <laughs> tell me how I can improve. Yeah. A Western guy will very likely be like, oh, you're... You're, I don't like how you're talking to me. Uh, <laughs> They're a bit more uh, feminine, yeah? <clears throat> But, yeah, it's, uh, you learn that by doing, by traveling, by trying, and eventually you get it right, you know? Managing people, being very good in a ver specific vertical, <clears throat> it's, not a, it's not a solid science. It's something that is like water, you know? You learn yeah, yeah. and you do things your way. I am very different from 
somebody else that is very successful in the world of video games. But it works for me and it works for him. There is infinite paths to success. And my path is Carlos' path. I like to deal with people with empathy, but at the same time, I'm very strong, I'm very ambitious. I will cut somebody that is slowing me down automatically, depend, regardless how close they are to me. I will cut them and, uh, and I, will, I will replace them for somebody better. Uh, who was the guy that you invited to your team, to your company, and he uh, um, did uh, your company much better? Who is this star, star guy in your team? Oh, many, many people. Like, for example, right now, in G2, there is a CEO called Alban. Uh, Alban is probably the best employee I ever hired. Um, he's amazing. He's really, really good. I mean, there's nothing else to say. He learned many things from me, but also he deployed his own doing into the team and he's doing amazing. G2 is in good hands for sure. Then many players, you know, like um, many players that came and went, some players came and are still there, that did a lot for the organization. <coughs> Caps, Perks, Nico, Shocks, Monesi, um, uh, Hunter, uh, you know, even Nexa, who's been there now twice, yeah? Kenny, I mean, I can tell you a thousand people, you know, that really did a lot, yeah. a lot, a lot for us. I, I can tell you everybody that entered, everybody that joined helped us become where we are today. Even those that joined and they were not good for us, they taught us lessons of what is not good for us. Мы подвели итоги года каждого из вас на Сабершок. Авторизуйся на сайте и получи подробную статистику о том, какой у тебя был средний КД, твоя любимая карта, режим или количество сыгранных часов. Обязательно поделись этим с друзьями и посоревнуйтесь, у кого лучше. А еще в честь Нового года мы запустили скидку на премиум и лайт подписку. 24% дискаунта до 15 января. Если что, это полноценная подписка, которая дает возможность выполнять миссии, играя на серверах и получать скины. А сверху к этому скин скинченджер и дроп скинов. Скидки мы делаем редко, поэтому не опоздай вас пользоваться дискаунтом. Карлс, what cars do you have? I have a, I have a lot of cars actually, but uh, still less than I would like. I have uh, two Rolls Royce, one Cullinan with uh, is black with Tiffany interior. I have one Phantom, uh, black with white interior. The Cullinan is a uh, black batch as well. Very good, very unique actually. I have um, two Lamborghini Urus, one green pearl capsule and one blue pearl but it's not capsule it's just a <coughs> normal rules i have a 488 ferrari rosso corsa i have f8 spider rosso corsa i have um, m8 competition i have um, g-class actually uh, <laughs> it's not bravos it's just normal g-class uh, oh i just bought two uh, revueltos lamborghinis they come i hope soon <laughs> It's the newest. The new, yeah, it's the new, it's the new no, no, it's the new uh, Aventador. Mm -hmm. It's like Aventador, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I bought two of them. Hold on. Oh, yeah, I have an S-Class as well. <clears throat> an X6 competition. Uh, <laughs> what else do I have? I think that's it, no? And I'm buying my, my dad a uh, Maserati soon. So I think the MC20 so looks very good. So that's probably the one. I think that's it. But yeah, one more. I don't have enough. What do you think helped uh, gamers to, uh, to become a big multi-gaming organization? Even though you started as a League of Legends team. Ambition. Same. Like, if you only have a League of Legends team, okay? That's like playing poker with a 2 and a 7. Yeah. But if you have a League of Legends team, uh, a very good Counter-Strike team, a very good Rocket League team, a very good Ra Rainbow Six team, blah, 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 blah. You have like a portfolio approach to your team. Then you're playing with a king and an ace. It's different. It's unquestionable that G2 right now is the largest and only global esports team, actually. And that happens as a result of the fact that we have right now 53 million fans around the world. And the amount of uh, times we have been told, oh, you're only successful because of this player. You're only successful because of this team. <clears throat> and then we've proven over and over again that it's not true. You know, yeah, we, we have the best, <clears throat> imagine we have the best contract team at some point. And then eventually what goes up goes down. It's normal, you know, that's just the way of life. But we have proven that every time it goes down, we figure it out and then we do well, maybe, and then go up again. That's every time the case. I think that the combination of ambition in combination with the relentlessness of never giving up is what makes G2 G2. Also, we like to have fun. And even though I'm no longer operational in G2, I'm no longer there, my soul will forever be there. It's my creation. To me, G2 feels like 
Sure. Imagine you write a book. Okay. Imagine you write a book. That book does not exist. But then you write it and the book exists. The characters of the book did not exist before you wrote them, but now they exist. And where did the characters come from? You. G2 are my characters. G2 is my book. The book now is taken by somebody else, but it's based on the story yeah. that I created. So that book will forever be mine. Many years ago, you said that TOs should allow players to stream from LAN events. What do you think about it now? What do you do it in the ESL shoes? Well, it's always complex, right? Because <coughs> on one hand, you want as many eyeballs as possible. You want as many viewers as possible. How do you get the viewers? By allowing restreams, by allowing large content creators to restream the games. However, you have to also understand, in isolation, viewers mean nothing for the ecosystem. What you need is viewers that bring you dollars. Otherwise, the system doesn't work. If you don't get dollars, if you don't get revenue, the system doesn't work. You want to do separate streaming uh, or uh, in one stream uh, some posts by uh, pro players? How did you...? <clears throat> yeah, I, I think the, the only way this works is by finding ways to ensure the content creators themselves <clears throat> funnel some of their revenue into the league. That's the only way. Because otherwise, the league can always argue they're losing revenue. Could be true, you know? And there is always a fine balance between number of viewers and revenue. There, there always has to be. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> because if there is no revenue, you cannot put together large events, you cannot be ambitious with what the tournament can become, etc. G2 was one of the first organizations in CSGO to sign a completely international roster. Why not you scared to make such an unusual move? Actually, it doesn't count. Like, nobody else before us counted. Because everybody else before us was shit. Uh, nobody else was good. Okay, let's be honest. I created Kingwin. The yeah. first one, Kingwin, it was a G2 team. I created it myself. I called uh, Scream, <clears throat> I called Michael Ele, I called Fox, and I put together a team. And... Uh, and um, before us, <clears throat> nobody did it correctly. Everybody thought, you have to be only Swedish, you have to be only French, you have to, you know? But I proved them that it's not true. Why, is, why was you so confident in this point? Because I'm a logical person, okay? I understand, first of all, I was a pro player myself. Yeah. And I understand how players communicate with each other. Eventually, it would work. And not only would it work, it would actually be better. Why? Yeah. Because you have access to more talent. If I have access only to French talent, then the pool of players on average will be worse than the pool of players of the world. If I want the best players in the world, I, and I can take one from Kazakhstan, one from Russia, one from France, one from, you know, then, then it's different, you know, different. So yeah, I, I was always under the assumption that that would work and it worked. What is the range of salary of tier one players? For Counter-Strike? Yeah. I mean, I don't know exactly right now, to be honest, because I'm not involved operationally, but I don't think it changed, it changed too much considering all aspects. I think that <clears throat> for tier one players, imagine a top 10 team, yeah. the two best players from each team are probably getting between 20 and 30K per month on average. Do pro players deserve this money? Some do, some don't, you know? It's not a one size fits all. Some do, some don't. If, if two players are getting paid 30K a month, that's 360k a year. Times two is 720k. That's for two players. Okay. Now imagine there's another player getting paid 25k, which is 300k a year. That is 1 million 20 thousand. They still have two players left and the support staff, right? <clears throat> Let's imagine with the two players left, you have a total of 1.5 million a year just in player salaries. Then you have staff team. The staff team all together will very likely be another six, 700k. So that's 2.2, 2.3 million dollars. Then you add on top of that all the boot camps, all the gaming houses, all the traveling, all the stuff you have to give them, all the one-off uh, things you do for them. That's another 300K on top. That's 2.5, 2.6 million a year. <clears throat> Just for the contract team, yeah? Now, how do you generate that money from sponsors? And all this, it's not easy. Like, I tell you already, a very, 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 very good sponsorship will pay a team, uh, for a single team, eh? will pay a team half a million. 
Scream, uh, one of the best aimers in Counter-Strike. They did, did not win a lot of trophies in CSGO. In terms of results, his most impressive run was in G2. People say Scream needed a special approach. One, what can I say about it? Yeah, I think that's just true. And I think that Shocks and Existence got the best out of him, to be honest. Uh, when he was with G2, he was 30 bombing often, you know? And um, it's just. He's the kind of player, like in, in football, he would be like a libero, you know? He's the kind of player that needs a lot of freedom. Uh, but at the same time, he also needs structure, you know? And you can, he proved that with a bit of freedom and enough structure, mm -hmm. he was a machine, you know? I think that a Scream will go down in history the same way that Neymar will go down in history, you know? Yeah, yeah. He's a very flashy player that you love to love. And in his high moments, is the highest probably seen, like Ronaldinho, you know? Um, but because his style is very specific, very special, very unique, it doesn't always work. And when your confidence is not all time high, and when you're not surrounded by the best people, and when your system is not the best one, then your one taps is not gonna work, mm -hmm. you know? You cannot just dry pick for a one tap. It doesn't, doesn't work in Counter Strike. So you need good setups, you need good systems around you, and in G2 we had it actually. Face Clan came, ah, yeah. came uh, into CSGO with buying your team. Uh, tell us more about the deal. How they contacted you? <laughs> Why did you agree to sell the roster? Is it true uh, that uh, they gave you uh, $700,000? In a few years, you called Face a bunch of clowns. Why? Oh my God, bro. You know, like a lot of things happen in my life, but I tend to forget these details, you know? But yeah, this Face Clan are fucking, they're a bunch of clowns, bro. <laughs> the, 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 the founders are fucking clowns. These, these banks, temper, all these fucking retards can all suck my dick. <laughs> really. You know, they, 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 they wanted to come into Counter Strike. They had this uh, illegal skin site that um, it was not licensed or anything. They were just putting out um, a skin site out there <clears throat> for kids to gamble on, and they were making YouTube videos about it as if they won. Oh, I won a skin! And it was every, everything was rigged. It was not their money. It was their own currency added into their own accounts. A joke. These people are fucking insane. Um, so they started making money with that and they saw an opportunity to enter Counter-Strike and to squeeze more money out of the industry by having a Counter-Strike team that is sponsored by their skin site. That was the intention. So they started uh, poaching. Who do they poach? The best marketable team that is also the best in-game or one of the best in-game, yeah? Which was my team. And they started poaching them, they started, you know, I remember Michael Ele coming to me with some bullshit. Like, oh, my contracts are illegal, uh, are invalid, blah, blah, blah. Mm, like, Go fuck yeah. yourself. I knew exactly what he was doing. Then he brought me some lawyer that happened to be friends with the oh. Face Clan guys. And I was talking to this guy, I remember Sebastian Gertz, this fucking retard, another <laughs> fucking retard, with, with some other lawyer that they brought in. I was just telling them to go fuck themselves. And this Face Clan Banks guy was coming to me to say, yeah, you have to give us your players for free because your contracts are void. And I told him to go suck a dick. Uh. So one time he came to Berlin. I, I was not living in Berlin, but I was in Berlin for uh, some business, yeah? And uh, he was like, are you in Berlin? I was, yeah, I'm in Berlin. He took a flight from LA to Berlin and he met me at my hotel at like 8 a.m. in the morning. It was a five-star hotel, yeah? And I go down in the breakfast and I see him, I see he's, he's dressed like a homeless person looking, <laughs> looking like a piece of shit. And uh, probably coming from party with fucking one eye black, you know, what the fuck is this guy? <clears throat> Just look like a, like a drug addict. Well, it turns out he's a drug addict or was a <laughs> oh. drug addict. And, and so he came to Berlin and uh, he was all tough. He came with this Sebastian idiot and um, they were trying Actually, no, to be honest, not Sebastian, but this Banks guy, he was trying to play big guy, you know? I said, like, you give me your players for free. And I told him, you go fucking suck a dick, you dumb cunt. And he started hitting the table and uh. everything. And I was like, okay, you keep doing that. We're gonna, I'm gonna beat the shit out of you. And uh, that was like this, really. And, and um, I was just laughing, you know? This fucking guy, he comes to Berlin just for me to, to tell me that he wants my players for free. So anyway, I told him, look, you want my players, it's gonna be a million dollars take it or leave it, you know? And, and he, uh, 
<coughs> left the place, fucking security around, and uh, eventually he paid up because he's a bitch. And yeah, they paid up. They financed my operations, and then I became the largest esports team in the world. And then FaZe Clan are just complete garbage, as you can see right now. They're sucking many digs. The founders haven't made any money. This guy probably can't even afford good drags. That's why he's on Adderall. So, shit people all around. FaZe uh, became a bankrupt. Yeah, I mean, FaZe, you, you, you see them, right? In the stock yeah, market. Yeah, uh, yeah. why? Why? <coughs> well, because it's run by clowns, bro. When you have clown founders, they will hire clown executives, that, which will hire clown operations guys, which will hire clown managers, which will hire clown specialists. That's how it works. When you have a clown company, eventually the clown company becomes a whole clown company, yeah? Yeah. It's okay. This is the way it's supposed to be. Which transfer was the hardest one uh, in your experience? <laughs> Not hardest. only in Counter-Strike. Hardest one... Um, Getting caps in League of Legends, uh, that was insane, actually. Bro, when we had the French super team with uh, Shox and Kenny, yeah. <clears throat> that was really fucking hard. Because Envious, the American team, they were trying to get the same team. And it was very hard to get it, actually. But I did, because I'm better. Uh, it, 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 was, it was fun, though. It was, it was fun. I had to pay a good amount for them. Uh, what uh, teams you can respect? What respect? companies, yeah, organizations? <clears throat> Funny, I mean, I'm very fair, eh? I'm very fair. I respect FaZe, not for the company they are, but for the brand they created. Out of YouTube, 360, Noscope, Call of Duty, blah, they own a whole, a whole segment. I respect them for that. I am a fair person. I give them the credit when credit is due. I give them shit when shit's due. <clears throat> I respect Team Liquid. Um, I think they overpay. I don't think they're very good at their job. I don't think they're very um, creative. I don't think they even have a brand, to be honest. Their whole brand is to be inclusive. Very, this is the typical westernized Disney shit, where you just, you know what I mean, right? All this inclusive nonsense, yeah? And uh, on the other hand, they're very ambitious. So I, I appreciate ambition, uh, ambitious people, they, because they push me. Mm -hmm. I also appreciate Fnatic, because they're a very old team. And again, even though I don't always respect what they do, at the end of the day, they've been alive for long. They have, for the most part, been ambitious. They've tried many things, and their brand is actually very nice. Their colors are nice, the design is nice, the website is nice. Uh, Cloud9, just like Faceclan, they made their own thing in League of Legends, being the cute whatever team. <laughs> and even though, again, the company might not make a lot of sense, as a brand, as a community, it's very nice, you know? So yeah, I respect them for different reasons, you know? I like Navi. Uh, maybe not. I don't, I don't follow right now how Navi is doing in general. I saw them in Counter Strike in general, Simple but I, bench. I don't see them in. A, I don't see them uh, in social media or anything. But I, they used to be decent, yeah. For CIS, it used to be pretty decent. Actually, there's always something you can learn from every team, actually. And some teams do some things very well. Maybe everything else not good, but some things very well. And that I give credit to some. You were the first organization who had both Shocks and Kenny's in one team. How did you manage to do it? Yeah, the same reason why we had Perks and Caps in one team. The same reason why we have Nico and Monesi in one team. Like, we do the impossible. That's what we do. And I've done that over and over. And uh, it's, it was the most enjoyable part of my job, is to do things with lineups that seemed impossible. Mm -hmm. I always love doing that. Always. Is it true that both G2 and Envious invited Zaevo long before he joined Vitality? People say that uh, he offered uh, 1, 000, uh, 10 thousand euros a month as a salary, but he refused because he wanted to finish school. Is it true? Not true. Um, there was something else at play. We could have gotten him. It's true. But different people from the team, from the construct team, not, I'm not talking players only. <clears throat> I'm talking staff, I'm talking people around the team uh, thought he was cheating, actually. That's why we didn't pick him up. Cheating? Yeah, yeah. But that was before he became yeah. popular. It's normal, by the way. It's not completely terrible to think that before, a, when a player is 15 years old or something like this, <clears throat> completely unknown, killing it in face it, destroying everyone, highlight reels everywhere, people ask questions. It's normal, you know? Yeah. And the pros or the... Um, staff team they asked questions and they were not sure he was cheating but they didn't want to take the risk <clears throat> you can take the risk if you're mr nobody team but if you're g2 yeah. 
and you take the risk, you get a player that you have to replace one of your players with, and he turns out to be a cheater, he fucks your whole shit up. Even if there is a 10% chance he's a cheater, you cannot pick him up. It's too much risk. Your sponsors, the fans, you can get banned from the league. You, you see the catastrophe that can happen for a team with 200 or 300 employees? You cannot do that. You cannot take the risk. It's normal. Tell me more about Kenya's <clears throat> departure. Later, Kenya said that it was the best decision both for you and for him, and that uh, he could not reach his peak in, this, in that roster in g What can you say about him? How do you remember Kenya? I, I cannot, to be honest, I cannot remember exactly how his departure played out because, I mean, you can imagine there's a lot of players that came in, went out. I, I promise I don't remember exactly what happened. But what I can tell you is what I remember about Kenny. Kenny is like magic player, you know, magician player. I put Kenny at the same level that I put Chucks, at the same level that I put um, Nico for what, they, what he did for the team, you know, Monesi for what he did for the team. I mean, he was fucking magic, you know, uh, to watch him play. He's a, he's a legend and I respect him greatly, yeah? And uh, he did things his way and he understood what worked for him. For him, it didn't work if he plays Counter-Strike 14 hours a day. Mm. For, team, mm. for him, it worked if he had a nice life he's happy with and then he plays on the side. And every time you would try to put more structure into his life, he, would, he was better, uh, worse. A bit like Neymar, a bit like Scream, you know, a bit yeah. like this. It's the magic players, it's magic. Magic stick. Actually, magic stick, you're right. You're, actually, that's a good one, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's the magic stick. You know, you have to let him do his thing. And by the way, very nice human. Kenny, very nice human. I have no complaints. Very nice human. I like good people, bro. I think working with good human beings is just different, man. Like when you root for them, you want to help them, you know? How did it even happen that your Spanish organization became one of the biggest names in French CSGO scene? I don't care about Spain. I don't care about France. I care about winning. You know, I happen to be born in Spain, but I could be born in uh, South Africa and it wouldn't matter to me. I don't care about Spain. I don't care. I don't follow. I, I don't root for the Spanish football team. I don't care. I don't uh, I, the same way. I don't care about France. I don't care. I just want to win. So if that if, if, I, if I can win with the Spanish, I, I get Spanish. If I can win with French, I get French. If I can win with global, I get global. Uh, in 2019, uh, Vitality came to the market and wanted to gather a French super team. Yeah. They took shocks from you and uh, your French roster now uh, had two empty spots. And what did you do? You signed Serbian tier 2 players, Hunter and Nexa. How and why? Tell me more. It was a great opportunity to become international again and get out. I, I call it the French Mafia. I love all the uh, French guys, really. I love uh, shocks. I love these guys. The French Mafia. They yes, there's like nepotism, you know? Yeah. They hire each other. They, they like each other or they don't like each other, then there's like politics and I don't want to play that game. I'm not French as well, I don't know what the fuck the thing is. I don't want to deal with that. And I want to own my team in the sense of I want to own my decisions. When you have a full French team and you have one of the old names, they are the kings of the team, you know? But no, this is my team. I do things my way, you know? And at some point when I saw the opportunity to start doing things my way and have full control over the lineup and how things are done, I took it. When Kovac Cousins decided to play in one team, everyone said that uh, there is two options. Either Hunter goes to face or Nico joins G2. How did you end up uh, signing Nico? Um, because uh, I do better business than face. <laughs> I don't know how else to, to explain it, you know? And I don't, play, I don't play sneaky games like these guys do. I go straight, you know? And uh, yeah, I paid them a million dollars for Nico. It's okay, I, I knew it was good for me. Uh, there are rumors uh, that Nico wanted to create his own team. Nico, Hunter, Nexa, Cold Zero and Fallen. Mm -hmm. Did you hear about it and why this idea failed? Yeah, there's always things <coughs> like this. Sometimes it's a small rumor that has no, nothing behind. Sometimes it's a small rumor that two players are talking about as ideas. Meanwhile, they're doing face it. And then one talks, one talks, and then it reaches HLTV in two days or one day. It's normal. Um, this one in particular was not too serious because it never reached my desk. Riot Games or Valve? Who will win? In what? In uh, cybersport, in esports. I mean, Valve has the money printing machine, which is Steam. They also have the Steam Deck. 
and they probably will come up with some yeah if valve figures out a way to be web3 friendly so that when blockchain games come out they remain strong then they will remain strong forever very likely uh, riot games is a publisher they have tencent behind of course it's tencent owned tencent is very strong but I just, I don't know the future, bro. They're both very well, they're both very strong, but they're both very different. Riot Games is an investment from Tencent. They're majority owned by Tencent. Almost everything is owned by Tencent. And they rely on good games coming out. Valve <clears throat> doesn't rely on good games coming out. If CS and Valve and Dota stop doing well, Valve doesn't care. They have Steam, you know? So, two different companies. Yeah. Let's talk about the second place on the major against Navi. How did the team and G2 staff react to this? It was an especially painful lose. Navi made a comeback and Nico missed that Ziggle shot. Why are people tilted? In your staff, in your team? Very tilted, of course. Special situation where you see yourself being able to uh, win. Finally! Yeah. And yeah, but sometimes it's not meant to be, bro. Sometimes it's not meant to be. There is, uh, I don't believe in coincidences. I don't believe that it's a coincidence that you're about to win the first map, a map that they never lost. Like, they didn't lose Nuke before. Yeah. And then you're about to win that map. And then something that is so ridiculous happens. I don't believe in coincidences. I believe that things... Um, call it God, call it the universe. <coughs> call it what it's meant to be. What you deserve. Or you think you deserve. When you don't think you deserve to win the Major, those things will happen every time. Why more Nissin? Well, there were not many snipers actually available. Who? I, it was, it was uh, simple, it was Device, but Device was like unproven. I said no to Device because he was like so weird, bro. Like some stories you hear and then he disappears and then some nonsense I don't want to deal with. Sir Q from, uh, you know Sir Q? Remember Sir Q? Yeah, Sir yeah. Q, yeah, Bulgarian. He was like, at some point it was very good, but then he was on the way down. So I was thinking of Sir Q too as well. And there was somebody else. Yeah, Sai Wu we tried, but nothing untouchable. Phenomenal. Okay. What? Phenomenon. No, we didn't. I, I, I know, but we didn't, we didn't try. It's my, it's my snipe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then Monacy was just the, was just the way, you know? Young, fresh blood. When I spoke with him, it was like perfect, you know? <clears throat> and Navi had a problem, which was Monacy cannot come to the first team because there's simple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah? We had to pay a lot eh, for, for Monacy. I, don't, I think nobody ever paid this amount of money for a young guy yeah. in any game ever. Yeah. Yeah. We paid them a lot of fucking money. It was unbelievable. But yeah, they were asking for seven figures. Oof. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How did Monesi adapt to the team? 16 years old kid just went Quick, to Quick, very easy, simple. He's very, very, very humble. He listens, he tries to improve all the time. He doesn't tilt. He's, uh, his mind is uh, tilt-proof. Very easy. Did One of the easiest I've seen. Did you talk to his parents in, the, in that yes. time? Yeah. Yeah, we tried. Uh, I mean, we had to. He was 16 years old. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he was in like some village somewhere. And I gave his parents the promise that we would take care of him. I gave his parents the promise that he would be a millionaire. And I gave his parents the promise that he would make them proud. And I would I make his dad the promise that I wouldn't let any bad happen to him in career. I am coming for you, Sasha. Who came up with this phrase? <laughs> he did, by himself. What do you think about replacing GKS with Nexa? Uh, let's be honest, many people in the community think that it, uh, this is not the best move. There are rumors that Nico likes to bring friends to his team. Is it nah. Okay, do you think Nico would want to bring friends to his team as opposed to someone that he believes he can win with? People are stupid. <laughs> <coughs> really. There's no friends in this, in this team. Yeah. There's either better or worse for the team and what you can do financially because you cannot get everybody you want. Otherwise, I mean, you just cannot get everybody you want. You have to buy them out, then there's a salary, then blah, blah, blah. The business has to make sense. Yeah. You generate X amount of money from sponsors and then you have to make the team make sense. You cannot get everybody you want. So you have a pool of options and from the pool of options, you choose what you can get. And he was part of the decision because he's an important part of the team, Nico. I'm not involved, by the way, in the operations. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you how it works typically, yeah. right? Um, I don't even know if it's Nico who took the decision. To be honest, I'm not involved. I promise I really don't know. <coughs> but I can tell you from my experience is that the team 
has a pool of talent that he can get, they can get, and then the players and staff all decide together with the organization, they decide together who to get. And this is not Nico saying, oh, this is my friend. <laughs> You're fucking crazy. This is a, a billion dollar organization. You're fucking insane. <laughs> well, yeah, a player just get his friend. It's never gonna, never gonna happen. Uh, many tier one organizations had huge finan financial struggles uh, this year, but G2 looks okay. Mm -hmm. In your opinion, what is the biggest mistakes of the teams that lead to problems with the money? They're not good at business. The founders are not good. The senior staff is not good. They're not good at business. Simple. When you're good at business, you create good business. <laughs> when you're not good at business, you create not good business. But what is the biggest uh, and so popular uh, mistake in teams? Overpay for talent they shouldn't overpay. Um, mm -hmm. Being unable to create a brand with a community that is fiercely behind the team. Being unable to sell, actually. Yeah. Like actually reach out to sponsors and know how to sell to them. <clears throat> being unable to create products that people want to buy, jerseys that people want to buy, like market them, being good at marketing. I mean, it's a whole company, bro. You need to be good at marketing. You need to be good at community managing, community building. You need to be good at branding. You need to be good at colors, design. You need to be good at winning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a combination of things. If you're only good at winning, your team will not be successful. If you're only good at community management, your team will not be successful. If you're only good at sales, you will close sponsorships, but then they will not renew because you don't have everything else. Yeah. You have to be good at everything. And if you're good at business, you will make your business succeed one way or another. G2 is so uh, <coughs> successful in uh, partnership uh, with sponsors. Yeah. How many people work uh, on m marketing in G2? My biggest team is the marketing team. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Insane. So how many people? I don't know how many right now, but when I was there, maybe like 50 something people. How many people was uh, when you... 200 maybe, 200 and something. Andrew Ted Scandal and your departure from G2. I will be honest, most of my viewers are from CIS and there are no many people who know about that situation. Can you tell your own version of that happened? How did you end up leaving the organization that you created? I have in my life <coughs> maybe one or two friends, okay? Friends. And then I have my family. I take care of all of them. Tate is not one of them, okay? He's one of the many people I know. I happen to like him, like I like many people around me, but he's not a friend. I have never, I don't know him for many years. I don't, I haven't gone through shit with him and then up and then down, which is what you typically do with friends to understand what cloth they're made of yeah. and the type of person they are. So he's not at that level. However, it doesn't matter <clears throat> for how long I know him for. It doesn't matter how close or far from me he is. If I want to party with him, if I want to have him as my close acquaintance, even friend, people can go suck a dick. If I want to have Saddam Hussein as my best friend and I go with Vladimir Putin on Thursdays for dinner and then I go on Fridays with Zelensky, people can suck a dick. I don't care. It's my prerogative. It's my life. I want to have Donald Trump as my best friend. I will. I don't care. If that means <clears throat> I will have people and sponsors walk away, assalamu alaikum. <laughs> really, my life, I have one life, this life. Maybe there is reincarnation, I don't fucking know. But this life I'm living is my life. I will not allow anybody to have leadership over my life besides myself. My principles, my moral compass is mine. If that means I lose every business, every money, everybody around me, everything, 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 and I end up alone with nothing, I will be alone with nothing, but straight. Yeah. That's me. So that's the best way to sum, sum it up, you know? <clears throat> when this happened, I could have just said, oh, I didn't know, I could blah, you know, he's not even that close to me. Okay, let's keep going. Sorry. And then I continue my life normally as CEO, blah, blah, blah. I was paying myself a great salary. I was enjoying everything, you know, it was good, I, you know. But I would be living on my knees. Yeah. And it's never going to happen. You have a pretty strong personal brand. Was it something that you did internationally or just like to be active on social media? I'm just Carlos, bro. I'm just Carlos. I'm the way I am. I like to make jokes. I like to... Uh, uh, I like to spend 
quality time with people. If somebody asks me for a picture, I'm going to stay there talking to them for as long as uh, I feel like they need to talk to me. Uh, I am ambitious. I am, I am how I am. And I am unapologetically the way I am. This question is pretty personal. Uh, I have my own CS2 team. Uh, we try to gather a good roster. We had a boot camp and uh, all the stuff, but still we can't reach uh, top 100 in national team rank rankings. Can you give me an advice? What should I do, do make to my team stronger? There was one thing that happened to me that changed my whole dynamic. Uh, <clears throat> it was the first year, second year in G2. It was like still the first year, the, the beginning of the second year. And I had um, a Polish construct team with Innocent, Valen, yeah, yeah. and these guys. Yeah? yeah. And I was in uh, holidays in uh, south of France. And it was the 17th, no, the 15th of Jul, July. Yeah, 15th of July. Yeah. And I woke up with a nightmare at 4 a.m. in the morning. The nightmare was like this I was the president of Real Madrid. Okay? Florentino. Yeah. I was Carlos as yeah. the president of Real Madrid. Yeah. And my dream, my, my nightmare was I had Cristiano Ronaldo and my general manager comes to me and says, hey, I have somebody that is 1% worse than Ronaldo, but he cost half the money. And I said, oh, nice. Let's get him. Let's replace him. You know, <coughs> we'll get half the money. It's profit, you know, only 1% worse. Makes sense. In my dream, that same situation happened every year. And it happened fast, but every year it happened. First, I won Champions League, then I got second, then I got fourth, then I got eighth, then I didn't pass group stage, then I didn't even qualify for Champions League. Yeah. By doing the same thing year over year, 1% worse, 1% worse, 1% worse. Yes, it was cheaper, but it was, at some point, my team was 7% worse than it could have been because I took shortcuts to get profit. I woke up sweating, hating my life. And I told myself, I will never be average as a team owner. What did I do? That day, or that week, on the 22nd of, the, of that month, I signed perks for League of Legends, which changed everything. And I signed um, a Michael Ele, Fox, and Scream. Yeah. In like those one, two weeks. Because I promised myself that I would not be taking the worst percentage for more money. I would go hardcore. And if I fail, I fail. And I didn't fail. Well, I failed sometimes, but for the most part, I succeeded. <clears throat> so that's the best way I can tell you. You have to be ambitious, bro. In your career, what do you regret the most? <coughs> I don't regret anything. Hmm? Really, nothing. What I regret nothing. What's the best advice someone gave to you? It was a very... <coughs> it was a founder of one of the largest gaming studios and publishers in the world. He told me, don't commit the same mistake I did and hire based on inclusivity and gender quotas and race quotas and things like this. Hire good people. Don't let any of those me, 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 idiots enter because you get one and they are like pff, cancer. They let everything get cancelled, you know? What is the best book you ever read? Uh, just a few. Uh, medita meditations from Marcus Aurelius. Um, I like uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People. I like um, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. I like um, The Kibalion, The Three Initiates. I like um, so many books, bro. I, uh, I like, um, of course, Orwell. Of co I mean, there's just... So many books I like. I like The Alchemist, actually, by Paulo Coelho. It's, a, it's like a fiction, yeah? But it's nice because I like... Um, I understand the universe in a way where what you ask God and what you believe you deserve, you get, actually. Yeah. And uh, my life is a perfect representation of that truth. So, yeah, books like this. What is the biggest advice you can give to someone? <clears throat> Nobody told me this, but I learned this. You cannot compare yourself with Elon Musk. You cannot compare yourself with Cristiano Ronaldo. You're not Cristiano Ronaldo. Ronaldo is an athletic phenomenon that is the best player in the world. Yeah. <laughs> A legacy player in football, yeah? You're not, and you will never be. Why? Because God made you different. God made 
queen ant, soldier ant, um, worker ant, reproductive ant, and every colony of ants in the world have the same exact ratio of soldiers, reproductive, uh, workers, and queen. Every colony in the world. Humans are the same. If every human was Napoleon, then nobody would be Napoleon yeah. because I will not have a boss. Nobody can boss me around. Nobody can tell me where to go to war. I will tell people where to go to war. That's just who I am. God made me this way. So I'm playing to my strengths. You have to play to your strengths. Now, if you compare yourself with Napoleon, you're going to have a hard time because Napoleon was one way. <coughs> you are your way. That doesn't mean you cannot be a leader like him, but it merely means Maybe Napoleon, maybe you're more charismatic than Napoleon. Maybe you are funnier than Napoleon, right? You have different skills. So I always like to think about this the same way. Ronaldo is the best football player in the world, but I'm a better businessman than him. I'm more charismatic than him. I can speak better in front of a camera than him. He, yeah, he, he's stronger than me. He's taller than me. He's faster than me, but I sing better than him. You understand? Yeah. It's like there's no better or worse in the combination of skills. It's just who you are. So play to your strength. If you are not charismatic, then don't have a YouTube channel. <laughs> you know? If you cannot write, then don't write. If you cannot speak, then maybe write. If you're not creative, then maybe you should be a lawyer, but you should be an accountant. If you're a great leader, you have no fear, then lead. Don't take orders. But if you're great at executing orders from someone else, then that's what you should do. And you should be the best at it. The best warriors, the best soldiers in the world <clears throat> were great at receiving orders. And yet you look up to them today. Thanks, Carlos. Of course, brother. <laughs> Ребятки, огромное спасибо за это интервью. Если вам оно понравилось, не забудьте подписаться на канал. Это очень важно. Обязательно советую посмотреть ролик с Бластом. Я сделал большой влог, где сделал небольшое даже разоблачение на все это событие. Обязательно переходите по ссылочке, которая у вас в центре экрана. До следующего ролика. С тобой был я, Эрик Шоков и Карлос. Пока.